Hey Legends, Magic Round has come and gone and it was an amazing weekend, a footy spectacular that uh, produced some amazing rugby league, some amazing fantasy results, a little bit more carnage and we'll talk about that in a minute, and perhaps one of the cheapy buys of the season in David Armstrong here producing a massive fantasy score. So with all of that in mind, let's get into it. Okay, so here is my team, and we produced a pretty decent score this week. We actually had 886, which was probably one of our better performances of the year. And generally speaking, I was pretty happy with the result that we achieved. Unfortunately, it wasn't significant enough to make any sort of big moves up the ranking table, but we've certainly stabilized, and we'll talk about that in a minute. In terms of the performances that were pretty outstanding, we have to go to players like Nico Hines with his 70. That wasn't too bad. Harry Grant and his 66 was good. Jaden Braley and his 56 was pretty decent. Lockie Galvin and a 63 was awesome. Karaz and his 62 were great, but the man of the hour is David Armstrong and his very impressive 87. So they were probably the highlights from my team, but unfortunately we've got a couple of, uh, of really significant underperformances and a little bit more carnage as well. So you can see here Jolleth with his six, that was really painful. We only bought him in last week, so we've got some decisions to make. Really keen to, uh, to get an assessment on that injury. I'm hearing somewhere between two weeks and eight weeks. You know, if it's two or even three weeks, we can probably handle the hold. But if it's going to be a long injury, I think I've learned my lesson from uh, from holding Nathan Cleary. And it might be time to uh, to pretty much instantly move on from Jolliffe, which is painful. But, you know, he does free up a, uh, a fair chunk of cash. The other underperformance was clearly McKaylee over here and his 19. We really didn't want to or expect to play him this week, but injuries just made it impossible for us not to. Salmon was a late scratching. Fuller, obviously, didn't get to play because Hammer is back. Maxi Plath with his HIA last week and Joey Manu in the same boat. We would have loved to have had at least three of those four available to play this week, and unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. So that unfortunately meant we had to play Sammy Hughes in for Max Plath, and I thought his 38 was decent. You've got to remember he outscored Ruben Cotter, who is, you know, almost twice the price. A decent bounce back for Kai Pierce Paul, but my big question mark there is, is it sustainable? And Angus Crichton, 49, not too bad, but we do have question marks regarding state of origin for Angus. And that essentially forces us to potentially make some decisions that uh, that I don't necessarily want to or expect to. Now, Pia Kura, he's been really disappointing all season and uh, and still disappointing, to be honest. He scored a try and managed only 36 points. That's not great. And I think at some stage, we uh, we really need to consider moving him on. Ethan Strange on the bench for his 45 was decent. He will give us some good buy coverage. Kula, 45, you know, not amazing, but somebody I'm hoping will grow into that fullback role over the next three or four weeks. Iro continuing to uh, to be really solid in center and has grown significantly in value this season, so he's doing a great job. And Drinky, we expected him to uh, to absolutely light up Magic Round, and he was unfortunately a little bit disappointing. So just scrubbing all of this out for a minute, some of the changes and focus areas for this team that I'm looking at this week in preparation for round 13 really revolve around the mids and the edges. So we've got some decisions to make here for uh, for our mids. We just don't have any really significant firepower that is delivering for us. And the edges have got some question marks around future potential especially given things like restricted minutes for KPP and potential state of origin for Angus Crichton. So we do need at least one more edge, I would have thought. There's question marks for me over Pia Kura. There's definite question marks on Salmon. He's obviously out with uh, some sort of infection. I don't know how long that's going to last for. We do have Maxi Plath coming back into the mids, which is great. 
So that takes a little bit of pressure on the necessity to replace Jolith straight away, or it does give us the flexibility of, you know, maybe a Jolith straight into a high performing edge, someone like an Eli Katoa. But then again, you've really got to look at who is available in round 13 and 14. And Eli Katoa, I don't think he plays round 13. So we need to have a look at all of that and make some decisions from there. Now, I'm expecting Nico Hines to play State of Origin. I am, however, expecting pretty much all of my centers and all of my wing fullbacks to be available over the round 13 or round 14 period. You know, we know that Cooler here isn't available 13 but does play 14. Iro, I think, is available for both. Armstrong, obviously not going to play State of Origin. I doubt Drinky gets the gig, and Karaz will be available for us as well. Fuller should come back and be available. Manu is a Kiwi, so he will be available. Piakura doesn't play 13, but will play 14. McKaylee, I think, will be available for both. Ethan Strange doesn't play 14, but will be available 13. Harry Grant is State of Origin, and Braley will be available for us. Cotter is State of Origin, Hughes will be available, and we need to find a replacement for Jolith. KPP will be available, and Angus Crichton is probably State of Origin. And Galvin, he's out 13, but plays 14. So we've got a few decisions to make. I'm actually quite comfortable with round 13 and round 14 at this particular point in time. So I think we'll have a good couple of rounds in uh, in round 13 and 14. But right now, I would love to be just accelerating towards the top of those rankings. Now, speaking of that, let's jump over to the next slide. And you can see that we have kind of address the decline so we have now stabilized which is good um, we were really concerned about this decline and a lot of this was driven by players like Nathan Cleary just not coming back in time and when they did come back just underperforming we would have loved to uh, to have changed this and moved upwards unfortunately that hasn't kind of eventuated we've just stabilized and this is a result really of only 15 16 players every week being fully fit and just having that one player or two players every week that seem to underperform i think the difference between stabilized and going up is having 17 fully fit players as opposed to, you know, the 15 or 16 that we've got down here on the bottom. So there you go. Look, we, we've hung in there. We've stabilized the result. And now it's time to build. And I think we will have a significant impact moving our rankings up in round 13 and 14. I think that's where we will really increase our performance. And at this stage, I think my first goal is to get somewhere around this 30,000 mark. And then build on top of that to get into the top 20,000. And then from there, who knows? But these are kind of my uh, my markers at this point. We want to, uh, to start building on this lower performing base. We really need to start increasing this because it is incredibly frustrating. It's probably one of the, uh, the most frustrating seasons that I've had, particularly because I know I've got a pretty decent team on the park when they are fully fit. So there you go, guys. Look, I hope you had an amazing week. I hope you uh, were able to deliver a 900 plus approaching that thousand point mark this week. You've got to remember, we still have a long way to go in this season. And I think the next critical things are really going to be trade management. So we need to keep an eye on that. And we'll talk about that later in the week. And of course, managing the buy rounds. I think that's going to be the tricky one to navigate. I think round 13, 14, most people will have under control. But then it becomes a, uh, a question on how you navigate round 16 and round 19. And I think if you can do those successfully, we will have a pretty decent season. So there you go, guys. Look, if you've liked today's video, you know what to do. Smash that like button for me. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, get involved in the conversation via the comment section down below. Now it's Team List Tuesday and I can't wait to uh, to see what the uh, the clubs are going to throw at us this week. I'll be back for that tomorrow. So if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do it and I'll catch you in the next one.